Hi, I'm Dr. Nikita Visniak, and today I'm going to introduce you to some basic drills that you can use for grade 5 mobilizations and manipulation, basically adjusting techniques, ways to improve your speed and increase performance. If you do this, it will make your job easier. So, a couple of things that you should look at. The first one, these scales are out here, and we'll get to that in just a second. But the first one is a basic body drop, and I'll demonstrate it from both sides of the table so you can have a good look at it. Key thing here is most of the weight goes into my front leg. I'm leaning forward, the back leg can lift up a little bit. My hands, wrist neutral over top of the table, and it's load, load, drop. So you see my front knee moves forward, so I use all of my body weight to push forward and in, and that would be a good simple dropping technique right there. Same thing from the other side, just so we can see it. If I stand here, weight into my front leg, bending forward into a lunging position, and load, load, drop load, load, drop. And if you look at my body motion, a lot of students mix this up. What do they do? They do load, load, drop, big drop like this, or they keep the weight in the back leg into a nice, you know, what is this going to be, warrior two or something like that before they start. They step in and then go ahead into a, this kind of a drop. If I keep my legs straight and far back like that, I don't have very good force. The more I can get my body up and over top, without hyperextending my wrists, keep my wrists in a relatively neutral position, the better off this drill is going to be. So this would be a basic body drop that would, you would use for like thoracic, typically thoracic extension adjustments or something like that. If you wanted to add to it a little bit, that's where we bring the scales out. The simplest way to do it is to take one scale and you can see it in the upper screen. I'm rolling in today at about 165, 170. And we'll just watch the force I can generate with this. So what I want to do is see the needle continuing to move up. I don't want to drop, stop, drop or sorry, load, stop, drop, what I want to do is go load, 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 drop in, load, 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 drop in, okay? So if I really try and generate force with this, I would take my big breath in, patient breathes in, as they breathe out, load, 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 drop. And you can see even me, I can generate about 240, 260 of force if I push into that with a lot. The goal isn't actually the force, the goal is actually how does that needle move? The needle should be moving up, 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 slow, and then fast movement, slow, 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 and then fast. The ultimate, if you want to use scales for this, is going to be stepping onto scales. And I love to use this for students because it shows me where your body weight is on your feet. For a lot of people, they trick themselves because they do this. They load in, my legs don't move, I can still see the weight in your feet is still the same. What should really happen when you transition is the weight should move forward from the foot scales into the hand scale. That's how you know you're transmitting force into your patient for a very specific adjustment. Okay. So just pushing through like that, and you can watch the scales drop as I move forward. Uh, big breath in, all the way out, load, 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 drop, load, 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 drop. So those are some basic drills right there. If you wanted to, other options you have available would include things like using a pillow. I always recommend a Simpsons pillow if you have one, that's going to be crucial for this to work correctly. Basically, take your pillow, fold it up, whatever table you're using. This is going to be like a supine setup, so you're behind the back of the patient into a nice low lunge, good control, and it's load, 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 drop. So you see the whole body moving forward. You can start in a kneeling position if you want, just like you're setting up on a patient, and load, load, drop, load, load, drop, all the way through. If you want another option available, grab a medicine ball. Medicine ball is usually a little bit thicker, so maybe this is your really dense patient, not 100% sure, but it's the same thing. You can kind of use it for a side posture setup, nice and controlled motion, and drop, drop. And so we can see that from the other side. Good body control, good movement. Pulling, on, pulling in on like the PSIS or something, load, 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 drop, load, load, drop, okay? Key thing, good weight transfer. If you're using a kickstart or something like that, you would set up here. And from here you can go ahead and body weight back, drop, drop, drop with your kickstart. Okay, but let's move on to some partner drills, some fun drills we can do. So we'll get the Super Dorothy in here. How are you doing today, Dorothy? Hey, how are you? I'm fantastic, good to see you. We're both a little bit tired. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so a couple of things. First thing, I'm going to have her turn and face the camera just a little bit, and we're going to do a drill for cervical spine adjusting. So you want to develop speed all the way through. One of the key things I'm looking for from students and practitioners when we do this is the force actually starts in the kinetic chain way up here at the pecs as the anchor and then fires down the arm, all right? This drill, we're just going to interlock hands like this. And it's like you're doing a cervical setup, so we load in and then quick push. So she'll go ahead and repeat that back to me. <laughs> okay, yep, excellent. <laughs> Perfect, and then I'll go again. 
Okay. All right. So one of the things you can see here, she's she's you know only taken a few classes of manip and a couple of things. So you can see she's developed speed, so she's a little bit okay with that kind of force. But I can see that her scalenes and platysma and things like that are contracting. What the goal should be is to actually relax these muscles, relax the hands. So when you're setting up on a patient, you just move in nice and slow and movement. Okay. Way better. Yeah. Okay. As far as your adjusting seal goes, go ahead and repeat. Nice. Okay. You want to be nice and relaxed all the way through. That's just going to help the patient relax when you're actually setting up on them. So when you thrust, you're only firm and hard for just a split second. Nice. And we go ahead and repeat on the opposite side. Okay. So we're going to load in and thrust. Nice. Good control. This is how you control that high velocity, low amplitude thrust. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, and for her, what I, for me, it's okay because I'm taller and I'm shooting down like this. For her, I'd actually have her down like that and then shooting down a little bit lower. Nice, really good. Okay, what do I like about that is you can see her arm is nice and relaxed all the way through. There's no tension until she actually does the thrust and you only need it for a split second when you're doing this, okay? All right, other variations you have is you can go ahead and just interlock your fingers like this and I can come in here. This is the equivalent of rolling into the cervical spine, spinal laminar groove right there. Rolling in and then fast movement. Rolling in, feeling if it's lateral flexion or rotational movement that you want to do. Those are available right there. Okay? Other variations you have could include just sitting down. So a drill we can do together, or you're, maybe you're bored in class. We can both just sit down like this. And what I would encourage you to do is whichever hand is, so I would use my right hand on my left leg or my left thigh. I would start with my tissue pull there and then I would roll across and that's my motion. Okay, quick demo of that, nice. Okay, good, and you can repeat on the opposite side. One of my biggest pet peeves for students, of course, is always they get biased one side or the other. We're strong on our dominant side usually and weaker on the non-dominant, so make sure you go to the non-dominant side and work on your speed there. Common error for students, especially when they first start, is the bilateral squeeze. They'll, they'll do one of these things. I mean, maybe that's a technique you want to use. I haven't been demonstrating that one typically over the last number of years, but you know, usually it's a relaxed hand pulling, and then the, this hand, the contact hand, is pushing through the joint that you want to mobilize. So back to it, we can do basic thrusting drills short of end range. So this would be an excellent way for you to simulate adjustments without causing any potential for tissue damage because you're moving in normal physiologic ranges, not at the end of the anatomical limit. So starting here, we can just go ahead and say, all right, this is her end range. If I go all the way across right there, stop short, and go ahead and just do quick thrusts there, okay? Quick quick thrust there, okay, <laughs> all right. So that's gonna be basic setup right there. Other key thing, I was a little bit lazy on that. If you can, make sure you get up out of your chair when you go ahead and do these motions. Getting up out of the chair will allow you to get more lower body force into it and make you a better adjuster if you do that. Other option would be the same thing for thoracics. So we'll get this bent, knee bent up right here. Give yourself a big hug. I don't have to use a full contact. All I'm gonna do to start with as a basic drill a flat hand underneath her back and just totally relax. She'll take a breath in. As she breathes out, I'm just going to load my body weight in and then little thrust like that. Nowhere near end range, not uncomfortable for the patient. Just a good way for you to work on basic biomechanics as you're doing this. Same thing for side posture. How do you lay on this side? Okay. So if we're setting up here and I'm doing maybe a PI ilium adjustment or a nutated sacrum, whatever it is, you just don't go all the way to full end range. You're stopping here and then drop through, drop through. You notice there's no tension in the low back. I'm not pinning her back like this and then trying to adjust. It's a nice neutral position and you can go ahead and just practice your drops, practice your drops. Make sure that you see that full body movement as you go through and do this.